Hello, hello, hello. Today is, um, let me check, Saturday, February 24, 2024. It's early in the morning for me. 6.30 in the morning. I'm going to post the solutions to problem 193. I have a solution from Keith Norman, which is his video solution. And I also have a solution from, from Eugen. Keith and Eugen have been talking to each other. And Keith then added a note at the end of his video solution to make it clear why it appears as if Eugen's solution is different. But it's not. The two are the same. So, I will first post Keith Norman's solution and then separately I will post Organ's solution. It is very hard for me to say how many solutions were correct. And the reason is that the final answer can be given in different ways and it is not clear always that the different way is correct. All I remember that green man Solution is correct, but there probably are another two or three, and I hope those who have the correct solution, whom I do not mention now, don't feel bad about that. Uh, it, it's simply that it was not possible for me to spend all the time to go step by step through their solutions to see whether the final answer was correct. But Green Man was correct. All right, if you're ready, here comes the video solution of Keith Norman. This is Keith's solution to Walter Lewin's problem 193. Uh, it concerns uh, a square parallel plate capacitor, but actually one of the plates is tilted at a slight angle to the other one. It's a bit like having a book and we've got one plate here and we've got one plate here and we just do that. Uh, if we were to come way out here we would find that the field lines are coming all the way out here uh, and that means the maths gets extremely difficult. If we keep the angle small we can treat the field lines as being perpendicular to, to one of the plates and, and in parallel to each other, of course. Okay, so we have set up here, um, the length is, is going to be root A because it's a square plate and similarly it's root A in that direction. I've, I've defined an angle theta here, uh, we're given that angle theta, I've, def I've, I've taken a, a right angle triangle Y, X, uh, theta, uh, and, and so the x equals y tan theta. Okay, what we're going to do is we're going to consider this as a series of little steps of smaller uh, parallel plate capacitors like that, all um, in parallel with each other, uh, so we can simply add up their individual capacitances to get the total capacitance. Um, and what we will do is we will we'll take a delta y and in the limit we're going to shrink it and end up with a with an integral to solve. Okay, so let's consider one uh, elemental capacitor and it has an area root A delta Y, the root A being that way. Okay, for parallel plate capacitors we know that capacitance is equals epsilon naught A over D. Uh, for the elemental capacitor that then gives us uh, the delta C equals epsilon naught root 8 delta Y. Uh, 
which is the area of the, the capacitor, the little capacitor, over d plus x, which is the new separation, where x equals tan theta, but we can use the approximation uh, x is approximately y theta, but do remember, if you, ever, if you put numbers in, you, you need to use radians, not degrees, radians for that, for that approximation, x is approximately y theta. So, that becomes this equation here, where I've taken the x and put in uh, y theta, and the total capacitance is simply the sum of these little delta c's, which gives us an integral, uh, because, because they're all in parallel, I should note, um, that's how we can do that sum. So that gives an, us a, a total uh, capacitance, which is the integral, and I've taken the, the uh, constant outside the integral, epsilon naught root a, uh, integrating from 0, x equals 0, uh, or, or y, I should say, equals 0, to root a uh, of 1 over d plus theta y dy, which is a standard um, integral if we do a u substitution. So I'll do a quick u substitution, d equals theta y, uh, and I get this here, which is a, a, a logarithmic uh, integral, which gives us this result here, um, epsilon naught root a over theta, natural log d plus theta root a minus natural log d, which becomes that, um, and that is our formula. From here I take a straightforward Taylor expansion, and then I let theta tend to zero. Specifically I let theta root a over d uh, become much much less than one, but clearly a and d remain positive values for us to have a capacitor at all. So when I do that, I get an approximation ignoring the higher order terms uh, here, and when theta truly becomes zero, I can say that C total equals epsilon naught A over D, uh, as I would expect for a parallel plate capacitor. Eugen, however, does something that I think is rather clever, um, and it's, I think it's a neater um, way of getting to the same, uh, same end. Um, he takes this uh, expression here, and he takes the 1 over theta term inside the log, and the natural log, and he gets this, because we now raise the natural log, uh, it's now this in, in here is raised to the power 1 over theta. So this becomes his final expression. Uh, he then notes that a definition of e to the x, uh, and this was due to Leonard Euler, a famous mathematician, um, is that uh, e to the x equals the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 plus x over n all raised to the power n. Uh, every mathematician worth their salt will know that off by heart. So then he does something I think is very clever. He substitutes n equals 1 over theta and x equals root a over d. So now he has this limit here, where it's theta going to zero, and he observes that that equals uh, e to the root a over d. So we now substitute that back in up here, uh, in, instead of all this, and we get uh, e total equals epsilon naught root a, uh, natural log, e to the root a over d. Well, the natural log and the e will cancel each other out, and that simply means we get epsilon naught root a times root a over d, which uh, Eugen correctly and rather cleverly sees is the result for a parallel plate capacitor as theta goes to zero. I think that is a very stylish end to the problem.